Howdy folks, welcome back to my World of Tanks replays with the Mighty Jingles. Today uh, we're looking at the second of the British heavy tanks at Tier 6, the Churchill Mark 7, which is a distinct improvement over the Mark 1 Churchill because this thing actually has some armour. It has more than double the armour of the Mark 1, which is very, very welcome because the Mark 1 Churchill, while fun to drive, isn't really a heavy tank. It's got medium tank armour and a medium tank gun but it's got very heavy tank speed. Um, the Mark 7 Churchill at least has heavy tank armour. Um, it still has the medium tank gun and it's got very... it's even slower. <laughs> Prepare yourself, strap yourselves down, get ready for this. The Mark 7 Churchill is even slower than the Mark 1. In fact, I think the Mark 7 might even be slower than the Black Prince. Uh, the Matilda Black Prince. Yep, it's slower than the Matilda Black Prince. This thing is 2 kilometers per hour faster than the T28 prototype. <laughs> its top speed is 20 kilometers per hour. Oh dear. Um, and it's a bit its a bit of a problem to drive this thing. I'll tell you why. We'll go through the stats. It's got 880 hit points. Um, how does that compare against the other tier 6 heavy tanks? Uh, it's probably pretty good. I'd imagine it is. Um... Where's my... Oh. Oh, I sold the KV-1S on the test server to make some space in the garage. Um, but I've still got the M6. Let's have a look. Let's just have a quick look at the M6. There we go. M6 has 870. The Churchill has 880. So, average amount of health. It's pretty heavy, though. 41 tonnes. And it's still only got that atrocious 350 horsepower engine. So, that straight away, that explains the speed. Uh, there's only one engine upgrade. There it is, the Bedford Twin Six. You'll already have it unlocked if you've played the Churchill. Um, and unfortunately, it doesn't get an other engine. It's basically the same tank, just with heavier armour. Um, but yeah, the armour. Uh, 152 millimetres at the front of the hull and the turret. With the upgraded turret, the second, uh, first turret only has 89 millimetres. But it's not just at the front. Uh, the turret armour. At, well, and the side armour uh, just has been upgraded all around. It's been beefed up all over the place. The side of the turret is 95mm thick. The rear of the turret is paper thin at 50mm. The side of the tank itself is 95mm thick. And the rear is also 95mm thick. It, it's, a, it, it's a tough nut to crack. It is very, very heavily armoured. Um, weak spots? Well, <laughs> probably. Um, I'm going to say that this machine gun port's a weak spot. I'm going to say that that hatch there is a weak spot. I don't really know. But I'd be very surprised if they weren't. These periscopes may be weak spots. And yet, I had that game in the Mark I Churchill, and came up against another Churchill, and he was aiming for the periscopes at the top, and he was hitting them, and it looked like he was penetrating them, but the tank wasn't taking any damage. So I don't know. I imagine this gun mantle here is probably also a weak spot in the front of the turret. Um, it seems to be the case on the Churchills that it doesn't really have much of a gun mantle. From the side, there's this gaping hole. Now, now, this is a weak spot on the lend lease Churchill. It's not quite as exaggerated as it is here. And these toolboxes on the side are also weak spots. You can penetrate these with ease, and you will do full damage. One on that side, one on that side. That may be the case with this Churchill as well. I don't know, but it's probably certainly worth taking a... I mean, 95mm of, of, of armour on the side. You're going to find most guns shooting at this thing tier 6 and up, um, won't have a problem getting through it. E even the German uh, L56 88mm gun, which has been widely criticised for not having enough penetration at tier 6, has 132mm of penetration, which is enough to get through the side of a, of a 95mm armoured tank. But you're going to find that your tracks, well, I mean the tracks are huge on this thing, look at the size of them, even, I mean these mudguards here cover the, the tracks just, they're massive. And, and like you find on a lot of the Russian tanks, the tracks do eat a lot of shafts from the side. Um, you still need to angle this thing, however, uh, and you'll find that it is very, very, very bouncy. But, and here's the big but, tier 6 heavies don't really have a lot of health. 880 isn't a lot. Um, it's more than a tier 6 medium, uh, unless, you know, you're driving a VK 3601H, which has a colossal amount of health. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, it's not that much. When you think that the guns that are shooting at you, particularly I'm talking about the Russian tier 6 heavies here, tanks like the KV-1S, um, they can do 400 damage in one hit. Uh, 
and they have 175 millimeters of penetration which isn't a guaranteed penetration certainly not if they're shooting at the front of this tank and you can make it a lot harder for them if you angle it but if you do get penetrated you can't take that many hits certainly not from the heavy tanks that you're going to be facing off against and as a tier 6 heavy tank it can get into fights with tier 8 heavy tanks and an IS-3 <laughs> with that BL-9 gun yeah that's going to cause you problems um, you, you really in a higher tier game certainly I mean if you're a top tier tier 6 game uh, you can uh, you can just run riot um, well I say run riot you can only do 20 kilometers per hour in this tank and it doesn't turn very well at all 20 degrees traverse speed is just awful the turret is not that slow 32 degrees traverse speed is okay it's not bad the view range is not bad 360 meters the signal range is average but this thing it's all about the armor it is it is a very very well armored tank now the gun the gun's a bit of a problem there's the gun selection um and that 75 millimeter gun there you will already have unlocked on the churchill mark one but this is the new boy in town the 77 millimeter gun mark ii uh, it's on the Black Prince, it's on the Churchill Mark 7, it's on the Comet, uh, and it's on the Century Mark 1. And again, as with the Churchill, if you've already gone up the medium tank line, uh, you'll have unlocked the 75mm Vickers HV on the Cromwell, and you can use that on the Churchill Mark 1. If you've gone as far as the Comet, the Tier 7 British medium tank, you will already have this gun unlocked, and you can save yourself a bit of a grind. But it's not really that good a gun. Let's have a look at the stats. Rate of fire is good. Well, it's a 76 millimeter, sorry, 77 millimeter gun. So you know you'd expect a good rate of fire. It's basically it's a medium tank gun, much like the Churchill Mark One has. Penetration is 148. Mm, yeah, the damage is only 140. Hmm. Yeah. Accuracy is pretty good though, 0.36, and the aiming time is all right, 2.3. It's just that penetration and that average damage. Let's have a look at what it's up against. The other tier 6 heavies. Uh, the Americans get the M6. The M6 gets a 90mm gun that has better penetration and a lot more damage. Slower rate of fire, however. But you can fire as fast as you like. If you can't penetrate the targets you're shooting at, it really doesn't matter how fast your rate of fire is. The Russians well, the Russians obviously get those big old 122mm uh, guns and 107mm this. Where are we? There we go. So the KV-1S, yep, yeah, there it is. The D25T, 175mm penetration, 390 damage. It's nowhere near the same rate of fire. I mean, it's not even close to being the same rate of fire. KV-1S has a 15 second reload. Um, but it, and it's horribly inaccurate. But you know, the way the KV-1S plays, you get up close, you hide around a corner, you jump out, you derp them in the face, you roll back in. It, it works on the KV-1S. You go to the... Uh, what else do we have? Oh, I'm looking at tier 7s. Here we go. Yeah, the T-150, that gets the ZIS-7. Is it the ZIS-7? No, it's the 107mm. I'm looking at the wrong bloody tank. Uh, uh, there's the KV-1S again. Sorry, back to the tech tree. There, the T-150, finally, 107mm ZIS-6, and that gets 167mm of penetration. So, uh, None of these guns are guaranteed to penetrate the front of uh, a Mark 7 Churchill. But here's the thing, these guys are all a lot faster. Even the T-150 is a lot faster than the Churchill. And they're not going to have any problems getting around your sides, but they're guaranteed to penetrate, and it doesn't take many hits from guns like this to kill you. And it kind of suffers from the same problem that the Mark I Churchill did. In that it's a very, very heavy tank, as far as the speed goes. With a very, very medium tank gun. And it wasn't that much of a problem for the Mark I Churchill. Because the biggest game it's going to get into is a Tier 7 match. But this thing can get into Tier 8 games, because it's Tier 6. And it's effectively got the same gun. I mean, compare the stats of these two, and there's not an awful lot in it. There's the gun. There's the gun from the Mark 1. This is the gun on the Mark 2. 
and they've both got the same rate of fire, they've both got the same penetration. The gun on the Mark 7 does five more damage, and it's got the same accuracy and the same aiming time. That is it. The only difference is this gun does five more damage. Well, frankly, that's pathetic. It just isn't good enough. They've got the nerve to call that an upgraded gun. <laughs> really? Five more damage? So you have to aim for weak spots with this thing. Unfortunately, the gun pen, uh, depression is absolutely lousy. And we're playing with uh, physics now. And the terrain isn't as flat as it used to be. There's lots of bumps and rises in the ground that really affect the way your gun aims. More than it did in patch 7.5 and earlier. And I've had significant problems driving this tech. Um, as you'll see in my South Coast replay, which was a pretty awful game. Uh, all Basically, the South Coast replay typified uh, all the problems that you have in this tech. In that it's so slow, by the time you get anywhere, everything's already been killed before you get there. Um, and in order to get that gun down and shoot at targets, you have to expose so much of the tank. Um, and you don't have enough health to soak up the return fire of the guns that can penetrate you. I mean, 152mm of frontal armour, turret and hull, is good. Don't get me wrong. You have to angle this thing. You, you absolutely have to angle it. Because the guns shooting back at you tend to have 175 millimeters of penetration, which isn't guaranteed penetration, but is probably going to penetrate. And if those 175 mil penetration guns do penetrate, because you didn't angle this thing, they're going to take half your health off. And that's bad news. So, it's, uh, I don't know. It's, I mean, I'm try I want to say this is a tough tank to love, but, you know, what's so different about this thing um, to the, the Churchill Mark I? I mean, it's got better armour. What, what more do you want? Well, you know, it's a tier higher. It's got the same penetration of the, of the tank previous to it. It's kind of like going from the T29 to the T32. Uh, while the gun works really, really well on the T29, that 105mm gun the T29 gets, uh, it's not that good on the T32. Uh, and you get the same thing here with the Churchill Mark 7, which is, it's a, it's, I want it to be a good tank, because it's a Churchill, for God's sake. And it is very well armoured, but being able to take it is all well and good, but you, you can't win matches by taking damage. You win matches by dishing damage out, and this gun just doesn't do it. And it's the only real choice of gun on the tank. Uh, the howitzer, just forget it. Just absolutely no way. Howitzers are okay in lower tier games. Uh, I mean, this thing does 370 damage if it penetrates. But you're shooting at tier 6, 7 and 8 tanks with this thing. It's not going to penetrate. Maybe if you could get around the sides and rear, you'd penetrate. But you're in a tank that only does 20 kilometers per hour on the level ground. It's not going to happen. And I realise somebody's going to say, well, you know, 148 millimeters of penetration isn't bad. You know, there are plenty of tier 6 tanks that don't have 148 millimeters of penetration. Well, yeah, you're absolutely right. There are lots of tier 6 tanks that don't have 148 millimeters of penetration. Here, I'll show you some of them. Uh, the Sherman Easy 8. The M1A2 gun only has 128 millimeters of penetration. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Same gun on the Sherman Jumbo. What about the Germans? Well, the Germans are stuck with that 88 millimeter L56. And that has 132 millimeters of penetration. Yeah, but you know what? Even a big, slow medium, like the 3601, can do 40 kilometers per hour. The Easy 8, I think, can do 48. Having that kind of penetration isn't that important. Yeah, 48 kilometers per hour. Having that sort of penetration isn't that important when you can get around the size and rear of the tanks that you're shooting at. You can't do that, not without dying, in the Churchill, because its best speed on a good day with a following wind is 20 kilometers per hour. So the Mark 7 Churchill is difficult tank. It's a difficult tank to love. You get this thing in a tier 6 game, and it's 
it will absolutely clean up. It, it plays in a tier 6 game like the KV used to play at tier 5. Back before there was a KV1 and a KV2 and when it was just the KV and it had the choice of the 152mm derp gun that the KV2 now has or the 107mm Z6 that the T150 now has. Um, and that tank just terrorised tier 5 games. The Mark 7 Churchill is the same. It's practically impenetrable to most of the guns shooting back at it. Uh, a Stug with its 150mm uh, L70, not 150mm, it's 75mm, 150mm penetration L70, can put shots through an, the unangled front of this tank half the time, effectively. Uh, and if you angle the front, even the Stug with its L70 gun is going to have problems getting through the front. And 148mm of penetration can easily deal with um, anything at tier 5. Uh, you're going to kill KVs with this tank like you wouldn't believe. Not a problem at all. Um, well, I'll say tier 5 maximum, obviously tier 6 maximum. Uh, you're going to be able to bounce shots from the front if you angle it, from even from the 90mm gun on the M6. And you won't have any problems penetrating the M6 with this gun. So when this thing's top tier, it's going to be absolutely lethal. In a tier 7 game, you start to get tanks like the IS, tanks with 175mm penetration guns. They're going to give you problems. Um, you can still bounce the shots, but they can also still get through. And you only have 880 health. And these guns do 390 average damage. <laughs> uh, a tier 8... <laughs> I'll put it this way, this gun would have a hard time killing itself. That gun would struggle to penetrate another Churchill Mark 7. And that's a bad sign. That's a very, very bad sign in any tank when it has a gun that is too weedy to damage, you know, the same tank. Unfortunately, that is the case with the Mark 7 Churchill. And of course, it suffers from all the same problems that uh, that all the Churchills do. They are so incredibly slow, but this one is, is even slower. It's almost 30% slower than the Mark I Churchill, and the Mark I Churchill ain't no speed demon. So, and again, as you'll see on my South Coast replay, you end up going the wrong way where there's nothing to shoot at, and you don't get to take shots at anything. <laughs> it's just... Yeah. So, uh, we'll have a few games, and I'll, I'll show you the sort of thing that I mean. Oh, but first of all, yes, equipment fit. Well, yeah, um, improved ventilation. Try to get the acceleration, the off-road driving, you know, all those crew skills. Just because this thing's so incredibly slow. Um, tank gun rammer. Uh, again, you know, as with the Mark One Churchill, it doesn't do a lot of damage. In fact, it's a tier 6 tank that does 140 damage per shot. It's tier 6 heavy. That does 140 damage per shot, and that's just pitiful. So you need to maximise the amount of shells you put down range. And 2.3 second aiming time, same as with the previous Churchill. Uh, yeah, it's, it's which is okay. It's not bad, but again, the less time you spend waiting for the sides to settle and pumping those shots out to take advantage of the uh, fast firing gun, the better, uh, because it's difficult to damage tanks with this thing in a tier 7 game. Uh, not so bad in a tier 6 game. Very hard in a tier 8 game. Unfortunately, that's just the way this tank is. So, um, let's see how we did. Alright, top tier on fjords. Uh, again, your speed really limits your options here. Um, I'm pretty much just going to have to drive in a straight line right towards the enemy flag try to kill everything I see on the way and we're top tier they've got a KV2 um, who can hurt us probably can't penetrate us uh, the Cromwell could get around our sides and rear the Panzer 4 two Panzer 4 small terms premium tier 6 could get around our sides and rear and in fact could, they, they could aim for weak spots they could aim for the gun mantle and penetrates from the front but but this is the sort of game where you're top tier, that the Mark 7 Churchill is not bad. In fact, I might even say overpowered. And it's because of this monstrous armor. 
it is a very, very well armoured tank. No question about it. The gun is just a bit weedy. But in this sort of game, it's a good gun. You know, you're shooting at... I mean, there's tier fours here, for Christ's sakes. This gun is not going to have any problems dealing with anything on the enemy team. In fact, it feels like this is what the Mark 7 Churchill was, was built for. It's, it's a KV killer of a tank. I mean, you come up against a KV, they're going to have severe problems penetrating your armour. You are not going to have any problems penetrating theirs. That really does seem to be what this tank is for. I mean, even a VK36 or 1H is a very well-armoured medium tank. I mean, it was supposed to be a heavy. And he's going to have problems penetrating us. We're not going to have any kind of problems penetrating him. shoot out yet, so okay, let's put this frontal armor to the test and drive down this road. Old side shot and a Mark, uh, Mark 1 Churchill. Okay, these tracks keep eating there. Let's raise our sides a little. There we go, through the side hole rather than the tracks. Looks like he's trying to return fire, but he's looking for weak spots and he's not finding them. Possibly his turret is too far back around the side of that building to actually shoot at us. Either way, we didn't get shot at, let alone hit. Come on, come to daddy. There's the two Panzer IV Schmaltons. Or Schmaltur. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Okay. Oh, the Cromwell. Yeah, we can have him. Yeah, no problem penetrating a Cromwell. No problem penetrating anything in this game with this gun. I mean, this is a this is a good game for the Mark 7. It's that Churchill again. And a T50 on the hill up there. Check that out. Look at him. <laughs> Sneaky little bugger. Oh, missed him. Another good hit. And he's in cover now. And our Cromwell finishes him off. Speaking of Cromwells, I know there's three of them up here. And there's two two mediums making a run for our base. That's not good. Cromwell. Okay, there's nobody behind me. Oh, driver's dead. Um, right, so I'm going to have to kill this guy. He's the bigger threat because he's behind me. Well, I'm keeping my frontal armor pointed towards the other one. There, now I can turn my gun around. Ah, and he was out of line of sight anyway. I didn't need to worry. And uh, we're being capped. Okay, uh, I'd like to get up there and kill that KV-2, but he's got problems of his own. Cromwell attempted to reset the cap and died, but they took out the M4 that was there, and now there's just a 3 6 of one h but he's good, he's got two kills. Am I going to be fast enough to get back here and reset this cap? We shall see. I mean, I'm picking the map, let these guys know, and it doesn't look like my 3601 is interested. It looks, looks like they're all going for that KV-2, although the 3601 could be going north to swing around to the left. Okay, now that now they've got to react to the cap, and the 3601H can do 40 kilometers per hour, so... Who's going to find this guy first? But I'm loading HE just in case. Because the 3601H does have tough armor. But I only have to damage him once. There he is. Okay, is he going to hide? No, he's not. Missed. Come on, come on. There you go, reset the cap. Uh, I should probably switch back. There we go, switch back to one piercing to get the kill. And there we go. Game over. So that was alright. Um, yeah. 
but it's the sort of game where you should expect to do well in a Mark 7 Churchill. When you're top tier in this tank with the kind of armor this tank has, everything is going to have problems getting through your armor. Um, and your gun is, is good enough. I don't think there's a thing at tier 6 or lower that this gun can't penetrate. Um, it's accurate, and it aims quickly, and it's very rapid firing. So you should expect to do well in the Mark 7 Churchill in this kind of game. Unfortunately, Mark 7 Churchill doesn't always get into this kind of game. Well, uh, there's a couple of problems when you're playing on the test server, especially when you're doing um, a tier 6 heavy tank, for example, like the Mark 7. First of all, you'll sit in the queue for two and a half minutes, and then when the matchmaker does find you a game, this is the best it can do. Because pretty much there's there's like a thousand people on the test server and 900 of them are playing tier 9s and 10s. Um, so, but you know, you can only go with what you've got. The other thing about reviewing or previewing stuff on the test server is it's very, very difficult to preview effectively uh, a heavily armoured tech. Something that doesn't have any armour like the Comet or the Cromwell, you know, it's easy to review because it doesn't matter whether people are firing gold ammo back at you. It's completely irrelevant. Normal ammo would penetrate you every time anyway. Um, but a tank that's got some good armour, like this thing, um, it's difficult to get a good idea of how it's going to perform because you just don't know whether or not people are firing gold at you. So it's impossible to get an assessment of how the armour works. So take that into consideration when you're watching. And, you know, this thing is just so incredibly slow. I'm going to speed things up. Um, but yeah, the speed is a factor. It's a definite factor in driving this tank. Right, there we go. We've made contact. There's a, there's a Panther M10 up there, and he will be dead before I get anywhere near them. In fact, most of the enemy team is going to be dead before I get anywhere near them. There they all are. There's absolutely nothing I can do about it. Bear in mind, I'm running at double speed here. Alright, back to normal speed. There's an IS-6 just appeared. Uh, I may actually get there in time to bounce some shots off him before he gets killed. But a couple of things to bear in mind here. The god-awful gun depression of this tank. And the gun innovation isn't fantastic either. But the gun depression is a much, much bigger problem. It, I mean, I thought German tanks had bad gun depression. You ain't seen nothing until you've seen the gun depression, the, sh the shitty gun depression on the Mark 7 Churchill. Now, this IS-6 is actually on higher ground than me, so I can hit and bounce off his unangled lower glacis at a range of 60 metres. And then, you know, he dies as well. However, our side armour, 93mm of side armour, did take the hit a good angle and it bounced from the IS-6's gun, so that's encouraging. Unfortunately, now there's only two enemy tanks left and we have done no damage to anybody in this game. And I'm not even confident we can find them. I mean, I'm confident the team can find them, but whether I'm going to be in a position to do anything about it is a different matter. Okay, there's the T-34. And I can penetrate the T-34. If he would just stay still... Okay. You're going to see. There we go, there's the IS 3. And you're going to see when I'm trying to shoot at this IS 3. The kind of trouble this awful gun depression gets me into. And, well, that was a bad shot. That was, that was just poor aiming. Aim for exactly the wrong side of his pike nose to penetrate. That was actually angled away from me and increased the thickness and the chance of a ricochet, and that's exactly what happened. I should have aimed at the other side of the pike nose and might have penetrated, but probably wouldn't. Not with 148 millimeters of penetration. Now, the gun depression on this thing. I'm trying. That, that is the limit of the gun depression. I, I just cannot. It finally. And we still... Yeah. We still can't even penetrate. The side of the pike nose of the IS-3 is angled towards us. 
making it easier to penetrate. And look at that gun depression. That is it. That's the limit. Now, any other tank would be able to peek up to the corner, fire a shot and pull back, but we can't do that because... Look at that. The gun's up in the air. <laughs> if we can't even hit the turret of the IS-3, alone his hull. And one more hit, we're dead meat. That is awful gun depression. Okay, the T-34's gone. And while the IS-3's got other problems, can we at least put a damaging shot in him? Or, or even just hit him. Just hitting him, I'd settle for. Look at that. Look at that gun depression. All we can aim for is his turret. That is just appallingly bad. So 880 health is not a lot when you're in a tier 8 game. Look at that, two hits and we're left on 14%. <laughs> um, okay, there were two tier 8, uh, uh, two, two big old tier 8 shooting back at us. But, uh, yeah, three hits from pretty much anything in a tier 8 game and this thing is dead meat. Although, to be fair, we did bounce one shot from the side armor there. Um, but... Look at the look at where we got penetrated. That's our toughest armor. Straight through the front of the turret. Straight through the front of the hull. It's not giving me a warm fuzzy feeling so far. And the speed of this thing is just a, it's a, it really is a deal breaker. It's so incredibly slow. So I ended up on Himmelsdorf two and a half minutes later after the matchmaker managed to find me another third of a team each. Um, and again, there's tier eights. However, um, I decided I was going to, to uh, just just to try an armor and weapon test in this one. Uh, I'm going to take a left turn at the corner and go straight down the old heavy tank road, um, and hopefully bump into that IS-6 uh, and just see how this thing performs against an IS-6. Now, an IS-6 is a tier eight premium tank. It's got very very good armor. Uh, it's it's sloped all around, and sloped armor got even better in patch 8. But the gun is a bit underwhelming. Um, so, this, ideally, if I can run it at that IS-6, I'm going to test two things. The performance of this gun and the performance of the armour. And uh, hopefully he's not using gold ammo. And, and luckily enough, that is exactly what happened. Although, he ended up having company. Um, which cut the results of the test short. But, you'll see what happened. So here we go. Everybody else is running straight up the hill. I'm the only person not going up the hill. It's, you know, when there's only six tanks on each side, isn't a terrible idea. So, bounced off his driver's hatch. Bounced off his cheek armor, but he's bounced off me as well. And there he goes, yep. So, Commander Cupola, Periscope penetrated. Didn't do any damage. Okay. Oh, crap. Here comes a Centurion. Okay, we can penetrate the front of a Centurion. But there goes my engine. And... Coming back to an external view here so you can see what this Nine Six is doing. He's aiming from the back of my turret. And bang, there you go. So, unfortunately, we weren't left alone with that IS-6. And I figure... I figured that that could have been an interesting encounter. That, uh, that could have been a, a real stalemate because I have the armor um, to defeat his gun, but he also has the armor to defeat my gun. And he didn't appear to be shooting gold at me. He bounced off me enough times. Um, in fact, let's let's have a quick look here. And this time, external camera view. We'll see where those bounces occurred. So we're going to go back to the beginning of that one. And then we'll just speed things up to get to the point where we run into contact with that IS-6. So first you can see where I was aiming and where I was bouncing off. And then we'll have a look and see um, what he was aiming at. And obviously he finished me off with um, with a shot to the back of the turret when I was aiming at that Centurion. Which is, you know, it's exactly what I would have done. 
Okay, so let's see where he's hitting me. Okay, uh, that seemed to hit the angle part of the uh, front of the hull. And that one, now, it, was he aiming for the gun mantle? If so, he missed, but that's good to know that he can't penetrate the front of the turret. And that's a Centurion actually doing damage to me there. And here we go. Yeah. And that's where he puts a shot through the back of the uh, which is fine. You know, two on one, I wasn't ever going to win. But it's possible, not likely, but possible, for you to defeat an IS-6 in a Mach 7 Churchill. Uh, which, which isn't bad, I suppose. But the, the odds are in the IS-6's favour. Uh, you know, and they should be. He's a, tier six, he's a tier 8 heavy tank. We're a tier 6 heavy tank. So, the IS-6 is probably going to penetrate you with his not very good 122mm gun. And he only needs to do it three times. Whereas you've really got to work to find spots where you can penetrate the front of an IS-6. But again, and it bears repeating, he is two tiers higher than us. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. Oh dear. Dragon's Ridge. Nah, don't get me wrong, I like Dragon's Ridge. I think it's a great map. But it's it's very it's very up and down. There's lots of lots of big hills. And I'm in a Mark 7 Churchill. So we'll just speed things up until the firing starts. Because it's gonna take me forever to even get to the village on the corner. So Cromwell's gone ahead, because that's what Cromwell's do. They are so fast. And shooting at something. Oh, an ELC AMX. Oh, that was a good hit. I think Cro yeah, Cromwell finished it off. Okay, good. Now, unfortunately... Two things are going to be highlighted in this replay. One, Churchill's gun depression. Two, the performance of the high explosive shells. Oh no, there's a Dickamax over there. So I'm just taking a pot shot. Bam, there we go. Yeah, he saw me. That's a Dickamax. 300 damage, and suddenly I'm not feeling very clever at all. So, external camera view here because you're going to want to see the, the gun depression and the trouble it gives me. Trying to remove that Dickamax's cover. My gun fires fast enough for that not to be a problem. Oh, there's a Stug. Okay, alright, we can hit him. When he's on fire. So, another Churchill and a Dickamax. Looks like there's a Cromwell behind us. The hell he got there, I don't know. Okay, there's the Churchill. I think the Dicker Max ends up over there as well. God knows. There he goes. Okay, watch this. Look at that. Look at the gun depression. I, I just cannot shoot at this Dicker Max. I've switched to high explosives here because I'm thinking, well, the Dicker Max has got crap armor. So HE should just one shot him. It's 550 health, and then eventually I have to move right up and I get a shot into him. And it does 212 damage. And then misses. And I still can't hit this bugger. And then it does 40 damage. It doesn't penetrate. It doesn't even penetrate his driver's viewport. So I switch back to AP. Are you kidding me? Seriously? Really? <laughs> My god. What the hell was going on there? Well, that was utterly shit. What killed us there was abysmal gun depression. Absolutely shit gun depression. That meant we had to expose so much of this tech to be able to get the gun down far enough to shoot at anything that we just got riddled with return fire. The other thing that killed us there was the utterly crap 
performance of this gun's high explosive ammo. Look at that, 38 millimeters of penetration. It's no wonder we couldn't get through. The armor on a fucking Dicker Max, <laughs> really? Ser oh, four hits, four hits on that Dicker Max. Three of them with HE. Grand total of damage, 402. The one shot with HE that we fired into him from the back that went right into his crew compartment is practically the only one that did any damage. And we actually had to switch to high explosives to finish off a tank destroyer with the with the kind of, uh, not high explosive, we actually had to switch to armor piercing to try to finish off a, a tank destroyer that has the shit armor of the Dicker Max. I mean, well, let's have a look at it. There we go, Dicker Max. 50 millimeters of armor at the front, 20 at the sides and rear, and we couldn't kill it with high explosives. That is just abysmal. And there you go, nine shots fired, six direct hits, six of them penetrated. <laughs> really and did 701 damage that is utterly crap i'm really starting to hate this tank it, it just fails in every category that you could think of it, oh i don't know it, it's real hard work trying to get a good result in this game and it isn't helped by the fact that i'm playing at the moment there's only 2400 people on the server and it takes two minutes for it to find a game and then when it does find a game there's only six tanks on each side um but you know that should work in its favor because that you know there's that there's that there's only so many threat you know so many threats firing back at this thing and yet the games are just awful and is it is it me or is it the tank well probably a combination of both i mean i'm hardly an expert in driving the thing i've only had six or seven games that's why these are previews not reviews uh but that was abysmal i mean uh, so well lesson learned gun depression on this thing is shit it's absolutely horrible and never ever load high explosive on this gun unless you have to reset a cap and you cannot penetrate what you're shooting at you will at least do some damage even if any you know it only takes even if all you do is 14 damage to the target you've done damage you've reset the cap and that's the only reason the only circumstances you would ever want to be firing high explosives out of this gun not that gun because that's the dicker backs uh this gun because the high explosive performance of that gun is utterly shit it doesn't even do that much more damage i mean i should have looked at the stats of the thing um properly before i even considered look at that 38 penetration and 190 damage fuck that shit stick to the armor piercing unless you have to do damage with your next shot 148 penetration 140 damage there's only 50 less damage than the high explosive shell the high explosive performance on this gun is abysmally bad don't use it unless you have to reset a cap um well like in the next example well again it's another third of a team on each side um that's just a sad fact of playing late at night uh it's something that isn't tier 9 or 10 unfortunately uh and again um it was really hard trying to find a game where i was top tier in the churchill or even just a game where you know it wasn't just tier 8 and me so uh arctic Tier 6 heavy, tier 8 game. They've got an IS-6, uh, two Super Pershings, and then a tier 7 Panzer, uh, Panther M10, a Hellcat T-3485, and a little M5 Stewart. And we have some artillery. And they don't. Well, yeah. It's the vagaries of late night matchmaking with a test server. Now... I'm not fast enough to really... I, I don't have a lot of options on this match. If I commit to this side... Well, I'm pretty much committed to this side. Or Cromwell has gone off alone all the way up there. Um, but, you know, I've already started going down this way, so... <laughs> Having said that, I do start making a lot of umming and aahing and changing my mind. And I figure that most of the tanks are just going to go and head it out down, you know, the corner of fail down here. Uh, and that sort of turns out to be the case. Most of ours do. Because, you know, with only six tanks on each side, you just want to get this fight over as soon as possible. You don't want to be hunting down lone tanks when you've only got two tanks to find them. However, the Cromwell runs into serious problems. Uh, 
and he runs into the kind of problems that I can help with with this gun. I mean, oh, great, there goes our AMX 50. There we go. There's some tanks I can actually damage. So super purging up there. There's the uh, Panther M10. The M5. So, oh, and here we go. The charge of the slow brigade. <laughs> Myself and the Black Prince. Two tanks, both ridiculously heavily armoured with not very good guns. At 20 km per hour top speeds. And there's that gun depression again. I just cannot get the gun down to shoot that M5. And the Cromwell comes back and intercepts him. Now that Cromwell's in trouble. Myself and the Black Prince can't do a thing about it. We're just too slow to react. And I'm actually contemplating driving around to come up behind <laughs> these tier 7s and 8s that are engaging the Cromwell. And the Black Prince too. Um, <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking of. But having said that, if I was going to go around that way, I'd have to turn my flank onto these guys, um, which wouldn't be a great idea either. So you don't have a lot of options when you're driving a tank as slow as this. If you make a decision, you have to make sure it's the right one. And yeah, as, as expected, the Cromwell died before I could get into position. And uh, if I did continue driving around and coming at the back here, these guys would be... They, they would have capped before I could do anything about it. Oh. And turn. Didn't quite turn fast enough. Should have turned and then fired. But yeah, you know. Well, that's it. I'm stuck here now. I can't move. Uh, if I turn to go around, they're just going to pump shots into my flank, so... Here we are. And here, here is where we are. Are stuck, unfortunately. We are going to stay here. Now, this... Um, He's not even shooting at me, he's shooting at the Black Prince. Uh, check out the minimap. There's the T-3485, although there, yeah, and I've just spotted him, so now I have to try to angle my armour against both of them, but that's okay, because they are both facing me from roughly the same direction. I can do this. I'll try and pull back a bit to get a better shot at the turret of that T-3485. How's the Black Prince doing? Yep, yeah, good hit. Show me his side. But, you know, the T-3485 has 75mm all round on the hull, so it doesn't really matter which side he shows me. And Artie finishes off the Panzer M10. Right Did that hit penetrate? Yeah, he's bouncing. I think that might have just been track damage. And, oh, great, super purging. And there is absolutely no way... I need to angle against this Super Persian. He is actually a threat. More of a threat than the T-3485, that's for sure. And the Super Persian bounces. Oh, Black Prince is dead. Didn't even see that happen. Okay, the T-3485 is dead. Artillery got him. And I'm aiming for those recoil tubes on the top of his turret, but realistically, it's not going to happen. A hold down super purging, I am never going to penetrate, unless I can hit those recoil tubes on the top of his turret, but from that range, it's not likely. And now, I'm in an interesting position. Now, it's our Carnarvon. Check out the mini-map. The Carnarvon here is heading for the base. He's going to cap. Okay. So I've got to take a risk here, because that Super Pershing pulled back, and he's probably going to cap as well. At least I hope he is, because if he's hiding behind that bush waiting to put shots into my side, I'm in deep trouble. But I have to expose my flank in order to get around here and go and attack him. But I'm only on 38% health. I only have 334 health left here. This is the dangerous spot. Yep, he's going for the cap. I, I have to reset the cap here. And I'm probably not going to be able to do it with armor piercing. Now, the high explosive shells are useless on this gun. They really are pathetically bad, as you'll see. Well, as you saw in the Dragon's Ridge video. Um, 
but they will at least do some damage. They might only do 14 damage on a hit, but 14 damage is all it takes to reset that cap, and that cap is close. So all I have to do is hit him once, so I notify the team I've loaded HE. Very conscious of the fact that that Super Persian can kill me, but I need to get a damaging hit on him. Let's just kind of get around there in time. Yes, there he is. Okay, aim, aim, aim. Didn't it? There we go. Yep, did it. Now I need to back off. He's already penetrated me once. Angle, 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 pull back. He misses. There we go. We've won. Wait a minute. What's that guy doing? Where's he going? Why is he moving south? What? Oh my god, I don't believe it. So my tracks have been blown off. There's a super person shooting at me. I, ca I don't have a shot at him. I can't reset the cap. And Herpus Derpus Maximus here then trudges back into this. Come on, fire. Bounces. Doesn't do any damage. Can't reset the cap, but it kills me. <laughs> Meanwhile, our artillery it is trying to do the job that we shouldn't have had to do because that should have been win. Uh, Want to see the result of this one? So, there you go. An absolutely perfect textbook example of defeat snatched from the very jaws of victory. <laughs> All that Carnarvon had to do was nothing. All he had to do was just sit in the cap circle. He could have he could have had a heart attack and died at the keyboard, and we would have won the game. But instead, he decided to do anything, and, and we lost, because he ended up resetting his own cap by moving out the cap circle, which meant I had to expose myself to that super purging to try to reset his cap again. He got a lucky shot in, killed me. Bam, game won. Carnarvon, why you no sit in cap circle? <laughs> oh god, but, you know, nah, what the hell. Yeah, so, yeah. Hmm. We did actually, um, I don't have the post-battle results screen, I'm afraid. I've restarted the game since then. Uh, the server ended up resetting. Um, we did actually take ten shots. We took ten hits in that game. Um, but, you know, what was shooting at us? Um, a T-3485, trying to get through 152 millimeters of angled frontal armor. Yeah, it's... it's probably not going to happen. Um, the Super Pershing uh, bounced a few shots from him as well, but his gun has 170mm of penetration, and I have 152mm of angled armour, and uh, yeah, he could penetrate us, it was just tough for him to do. And, and he eventually did, and killed us, and you know, I don't have a problem with that, I mean, he's a tier 8 tank, for God's sake, he should be able to kill a tier 6 heavy, and he did, so, you know, that's absolutely fine. Uh, so, you know, that game was just disappointing. But the tank itself, here it is. Well, you know, as I said at the start of the, at the start of this preview, it's it's the speed and the gun. You've got a tank that has a gun that would struggle to penetrate itself, and would take uh, quite a few shots. Doing 140 damage per shot, it would take quite a few penetrating hits to actually kill itself. Medium tank gun heavy tank very heavy tank speed it just it just doesn't work it really really doesn't work when this thing is top tier in a tier 6 game tier 6 company battles you're probably going to see a lot of these tanks because they are very very hard to kill in a tier 6 match it can utterly dominate providing you get it into the right place at the right time. In that respect, it does suffer from the same problems as all the other Churchills. All the slow tanks in the game, like the T-28, T-28 prototype, T-95, big lumbering beasts that you know struggle to get over 20 kilometers per hour. You need to know where you're going to go, and you need to be right. If you're not, you're screwed. You're useless. There's nothing there for you to shoot at. If you can do that, uh, get it right, in a Tier 6 game, this thing is going to kick some ass. Um, you still need to watch out for those SU-100s, anything with those 122mm Russian guns, they can cause you trouble. Um, but you can still bounce shots from those if you angle this thing properly. Um, but if you're not in a Tier 6 game, the Mark 7 Churchill really struggles, and it's because of that gun. It's just not good enough. Uh, it's got a good rate of fire, the accuracy's good, the aiming time's alright, the penetration is 
okay. Uh, the damage is appallingly bad. It, it's you know it's, it's it's a medium tank gun on a very very slow heavy tank. You can make that gun work. This gun and this tank can kill anything it gets matched up against. It can kill tier eights if it gets around the sides and rear, and it can't get around the sides and rear because it only does 20 kilometers per hour, and a tier eight heavy tank can kill this thing in three shots. And so they see you coming, they've got all the time in the world to put you out of your misery before you can get this thing into the position where it can do anything. So in a tier 8 game, and to a limited degree as well in a tier 7 game, you have to play this thing as a support tank. But it's just too damn slow. It's been really painful playing this tank. Um, it has not been any fun at all. And it's because it's so slow. And it's because that gun just doesn't work on this thing. It needs something with more punch. It needs a heavy tank gun, but it doesn't. It has a medium tank gun, and it is so definitely not a medium tank. And it kind of works on the Mark 1 Churchill, uh, which effectively has the same gun. I mean, it isn't. But <laughs> you compare the two, and the only difference, the only difference between the two guns is the one on the Mark 7 weighs more, and does five more damage, and that's it. In every other respect. Oh, and it's you know, it's kind of weird here. It's just the 77 millimeter gun Mark II caliber, 76 millimeter. It's probably a typo, but yeah, there's a technical difference there. It's a different caliber, and it does five more damage and weighs a bit more, and just adds to the weight of this lumbering beast of a tank. So I cannot recommend the Mark VII Churchill. It's an awful tank to play. It has absolutely abysmal gun depression. It is so bad. And the gun just has massive problems penetrating and killing anything in Tier 7 or particularly 8 games from the front. Uh, you have to go for the easy-to-kill targets um, because you can't penetrate anything else. And the high-explosive shells are just a complete waste of time. A absolutely appalling. 38 millimeters of penetration and 190 damage from an HE shell. That's just a waste of time. I mean, the HE only does 50 more damage than the than the armor piercing, and the armor piercing is at least probably going to penetrate what you fire it at. I mean, as you saw in the Dragon's Ridge game, we couldn't even reliably penetrate a Dicker Max, which only has 50 millimeters of armor with HE. I thought, oh, oh, tank destroyer, right? Switch to high explosive, rapid reloading gun, no problem. Switch to high explosive, finish him off. And it just didn't happen. The only occasion you are going to want to load high explosive on that gun is, as I did against that Super Pershing, to at least do some damage, even if it's only a trifling amount of damage, to reset a cap. In all other circumstances, you are better off with armor piercing. The high explosive performance of this atrocious gun is just appallingly bad. Stick with armor piercing. Unfortunately, um, even the armor piercing with 150 damage, uh, no, um, you know, 148 millimeters of penetration, good luck dealing with King Tigers, ISs, uh, IS3s, oh no, it's just, it, it's it's not good enough, and, and that I'm afraid is the tank in a nutshell, uh, it's just a big bully of a tank, you get this thing into a tier 6 game, and get it in the right place at the right time and it will utterly dominate. It will just terrorise everything smaller than it. But the second something bigger than him turns up, he runs away crying and hides behind his mother's skirts. <laughs> He's just a big bully of a tank, that's it. He's all mouth and no trousers when somebody bigger than him shows up. So it has not been any fun at all playing the Churchill Mark 7. Uh, it's been a real disappointment. It's got the armour, um, which, is a, which is definitely an upgrade over the Churchill Mark 1. Uh, it's got much better armor. I mean, the armor, you know, credit where credit's due, the armor is very, very good. But it's just too slow. And the gun is crap. It is, it's, a, it's been a horrible, horrible experience driving this thing. It's so frustrating. Um, so I'm afraid I, I, that's, that's basically it for the Churchill Mark 7. It's been a very negative review, I'm afraid, because I can't find an awful lot good to say about this tank. And I would be surprised 
I mean, I, you know, there's, every tank has its fans. I mean, there's people who even like the M3 Lee, for God's sake. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there are going to be people who, people who like the Mark 7 Churchill. Um, I am not one of them. It has not been any fun driving this thing at all. So that was the Mark 7 Churchill preview. Um, I wish I could find something better to say about it, but unfortunately, I, I really can't. Um, nevertheless, I hope you were at least amused by some of my misadventures in the, in the uh, video. And as always, take care on the battlefield, and I'll catch you next time.